watch Beijing cracking down on capital markets, and it's affecting American investors as well. The Cyberspace Administration of China reportedly says it will strengthen oversight of companies listed abroad, particularly those in the United States. It will then report to a central leadership group chaired by President Xi Jinping. This comes after China's recent security review of ride-hailing giant Didi, which Beige, with Beijing blocking downloads of the company's app right after it went public. They tried to delay the IPO as well. Joining me right now is the Prague Security Studies Institute chairman. He is the former senior director of international affairs at the Reagan National Security Council in the Reagan administration. Roger Robinson joins us now. Robert, Robert, Roger Robinson, Jr., rather. Roger, good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. We appreciate your time. Let me get your take on what China is doing. And, of course, all we have to do is look at what happened with Didi to understand this is impacting American investors. Well, it sure is, Maria. <clears throat> I mean, it's a it's another scandalous situation whereby the capriciousness of the Chinese Communist Party is in full view. I mean, it came in on the fourth trading day and wiped out about sixteen point four billion dollars, almost twenty percent of DD Global's value. Uh, this is on the the heels of the Ant Group fiasco, where they pulled the IPO within forty eight hours of it going forward. Uh, Alibaba is another famous case. That technology crackdown is in full swing. And this time, it is costing Americans. There are two class action lawsuits already from American investors directed toward uh, the Didi fiasco. So I think that we're now watching uh, lessons learned here that are really debilitating. And, uh, and I think it's going to get worse. I mean, not only do we have a CCP that's gone wild in terms of not caring about the cascading downside risks and consequences of their action, but we have uh, a host of other problems, like the fact that no Chinese company in the U.S. markets uh, is compliant with federal securities laws today, uh, lacking, of course, public company accounting oversight board audits, for example. So this has been going on for some time, but the chickens are coming home to roost now. But, but why is that allowed? I mean, why, why does the U.S. allow Chinese companies to list it, it on exchanges when they're not following the same securities laws uh, as American companies? I mean, are we going to hold China accountable? What is the policy here? I know that the U.S. is set to add more than 10 Chinese companies to the blacklist over the human rights abuses in Xinjiang, but we don't know which companies are going to be added, and we don't know really if, in fact, they are encapsulating all those companies who are producing products by the Uyghurs who are locked up right now. Well, first, we have a woeful lack of American investor protection, that's for sure. And it wasn't made better in May 2013 when uh, the SEC and the PCAOB cut a deal with the Chinese Security Regulatory Commission, basically waiving their requirements to be compliant with U.S. securities laws in a memorandum of understanding that, if you can believe it, is still in force. So Chinese companies are actually receiving preferential treatment to their American corporate counterparts in our markets. And when we talk about the addition of new companies to the so-called entity list of the Department of Commerce, which basically denies American technology components, services, and equipment to these companies because of their egregious human rights and national security abuses, uh, we saw five such companies in the polysilicon sector added last month. Three of those five are publicly traded and held by uh, major indices and ETFs in the United States, three of the five. And yet, you didn't see the administration put them on the so-called OFAC list, uh, the Office of Foreign Asset Control list, that is part and parcel of the executive order that President Biden issued on June 3rd, 14032, which basically cuts out these companies from the U.S. capital markets and prohibits U.S. investors from engaging with them worldwide uh, within one year's time. Uh, so, ironically, you can't try to wrap your mind around this. You, can, you can't sell them equipment technology, but you can fund them. You can invest in them. You can give them all the prestige of being in the world's deepest and most voluminous markets. How does that work? 
such a glaring policy inconsistency and disparity at work here. Uh, we have a lot of work to do right. here, Maria. Uh, the capital markets are awash with Chinese bad actors, uh, not ch and, and including U.S. sanctioned ones, as we've just discussed. Well, I was told by a Washington insider that the policy that Joe Biden is putting forth on China has no teeth. It's a lot of talk, but it actually is not holding Beijing accountable at all. Uh, Marco Rubio, senator from Florida, told the Financial Times it was absolutely reckless and irresponsible to allow Didi to uh, trade on the New York Stock Exchange. This is an unaccountable Chinese company that is accountable to only one institution, and that is the Chinese Communist Party, Roger. When are we going to see some real rulemaking and real pushback on uh, a, a party that has a goal of overtaking the United States as the number one superpower? And what is with these Wall Street guys who want to trade all these stocks for the money and invest their investor money in these ETFs? Yes, with Chinese companies, do they not understand the national security risks? Do they not understand that their children and their children will not have the same upbringing that they did and the same opportunities uh, once the Chinese Communist Party gets it to its goal of overtaking the United States? Why expand their, their why fund their expansion? I couldn't agree more. If we take the last part of your question first, uh, how do, how do, uh, Wall Street firms like BlackRock, Vanguard, MSCI, FTSE Russell, and others uh, explain holding U.S. sanctioned and other Chinese corporate bad actors, egregious human rights national security abusers, in their investment products, whether it's indices or exchange-traded funds, for example. I think it's a case where they feel that uh, this is such a sophisticated business, passive investing, that the American people... Uh, aren't going to know or care about the fact that their money is being invested in companies that are responsible for aiding and abetting genocide, who are in the business of equipping concentration camps, who are enabling advanced weaponry to be manufactured by the People's Liberation Army that's surely uh, targeting right. American forces. So the list is it, its really quite amazing. And I think it's arrogant and that they're going to pay a tremendous price in terms of their brand. They claim to care about ESG, right? We've heard a lot about that from yeah. BlackRock and elsewhere. But <laughs> where is that pesky human rights and national security set of concerns that can drive down share value and shred corporate yeah. reputations like nobody's business? But that's just off to the side. They don't worry about that. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm so glad you brought this up because I mention this all the time, this ESG BS, and then they're perfectly fine in China operating uh, where Xinjiang has a slave labor. Roger, we'll keep a spotlight on it as we have, of course. Thanks very much for your insights here. Roger Robinson, Thank Jr., you. joining us on investing in Chinese companies.